The Thunder Robot G70 is a lesser known option in the market, but on closer inspection it appears to be a solid and comfortable controller. Let's open it up and take a look at the controller inside. The package includes a controller, a 2.4 GHz USB dongle, a set of button replacements, and two swappable joysticks. The button replacement set uses a different type of button switch which feels like a rubber membrane kit compared to the stock dome switches that are included. In the interest of full disclosure, I was sent this product by the company but all opinions are my own and they're not seeing this review before it goes up. They're also not paying me for this review. The joystick caps are easy to swap out and it's nice to see that they have two extras included in the package. The joystick caps look relatively easy to swap over so that's kind of nice to see. It's also pretty unique seeing a swappable face button set. I actually think I like these better than the stock ones so I'm definitely going to swap this over in a bit. The package also includes a phone mount which is a nice addition and not commonly included in other controllers. This allows for some added convenience and flexibility in using the controller on the go. These are also nice if you use your controller for a lot of streaming. The texture on the controller provides a good amount of grip making it comfortable to hold. I really like how the grip adds to the overall look of the controller itself. The front of the controller has a softer texture but still provides a slight grip. This also helps reduce the visibility of fingerprints. The joystick caps also have an added grip around the edges, but the black design tends to attract dust easily, which is quite visible. This is typical of any black controller, but I'm really liking the texture on these joysticks. The fact that you can swap these out down the road if they get damaged is also a really nice feature. The triggers on the Thunder Robot G70 have a good amount of travel to them and feel very smooth when pressed. The bumpers don't have a clicking sound unlike other controllers like the Gully Kit. Additionally, the controller has an uncommon feature of a secondary bumper button. The triggers and part of the bumpers also feature a textured surface for added grip. There isn't any grip though on the extra bumper button. The back of the controller includes two programmable paddles, a mode switch, and two adjustable trigger depth guides. It's nice to be able to adjust your triggers between genres like racing and shooters. A shorter trigger would definitely come in handy in shooters with a longer trigger being more beneficial in racing games. Here's what the stock face buttons sound like on the Thunder Robot G70. And here's what the D-pad sounds like. The face buttons on the G70 have a good amount of travel to them and are transparent, showing off the backlight behind them. The 8-bit dough buttons are a little softer and tend to rattle a little bit. The gully kit on the other hand requires the most force out of the three. They have pretty good switches though underneath them. The height of the joysticks on the gully kit and the Thunder Robot controllers are basically identical. The joysticks on the Thunder Robot G70 feel smooth and responsive. The triggers on the G70 are hall based, so they are very smooth. The gully kit feels slightly similar, but with a little bit less travel. The 8-bit Doe Ultimate controller has the longest travel among the three, with a slight flare on the end for better grip. The G70 controller features standard Alps joysticks which perform well with an average error rate of 12% per joystick. The DualSense in comparison averaged about 9% per joystick. Additionally, the triggers are analog making them well suited for racing games and providing precise control. This controller has the unique feature of replaceable face buttons. Simply press the two buttons on the side of the face buttons to pop it out, then pop the new one back in and push and it'll lock into place. The G70 controller has four standard input modes on the back. X is for your standard X input mode, S for switch, and the 2.4 GHz connection mode, T for virtual touch mode, and D for direct input. To adjust the rumble setting on the controller, press the buttons on the front and you'll be able to adjust it very easily. The controller has four different rumble mode settings. The lights are also adjustable with the button here on the front as well. 
We we'll enter the pairing mode on the controller, press and hold the pair button for a few seconds. The G70 controller doesn't have any perceivable input lag when used on the Switch, which is one of the controller's best strengths. Using this on PC is also pretty decent with an average of 11.8 milliseconds in input lag. It also has a really good turbo mode, which can be activated by pressing the turbo button along with the button that you want to apply it to. The turbo function can be set to remain on until the button is pressed again, or it can be activated while the assigned key is held down. Turbo is pretty nice and it's good if you want to automate repetitive tasks. To disable turbo, all you have to do is press the turbo key and the button that you assigned it to once more. Once the controller is in X input mode, hold down the pairing button to pair it to your PC. It should pop up as an Xbox controller, click connect, and it should connect pretty quickly. The Thunder Robot G70 controller is relatively expensive, retailing at around 75 US dollars, but it does have some unique features that it set apart from the competition. These features include a replaceable face button kit, adjustable triggers, solid turbo modes, backlighting, and excellent ergonomics. Whether or not the controller is worth purchasing depends on your needs and preferences. I couldn't get the 2.4 GHz connection working either, but if I figure it out, I'll be sure to leave a pinned comment. This is definitely a good PC controller, but an excellent Switch one. If you can find the controller on sale and you want to try something unique, it may be worth considering. As for me, I think this will become my primary Switch controller. If you have any questions about the G70, feel free to ask in the comments section below. Thanks for watching.